Let's assume, just for a minute, a perfectly handled sale. The qualifying accurate, the presentation and the demonstration convincing, and the prospect definitely Cadillac-minded. How will it end? Well, it can end any one of three different ways. For instance, you could end up with this, a walkout. All the time and careful development wasted because the salesman and the prospect couldn't get together about price. But instead of a walkout, you could get a sale by giving away your commission or the dealership profit. That's what some of our competitors do who sell big volume but make little profit. The only right way to end a perfect sale is to end up with a perfect deal. The customer happy because he's getting fair value and the salesman and the dealership making fair, normal profit. That's the Cadillac way. To help things work out this way, you've got a sales tool that can be your best friend in closing the sale, the used car appraisal form. Now, it's true, it is not always used in closing every deal. The appraisal form should be used only when a definite price objection stands in the way of a close. When it must be used, it must be used after the selling, and only then. Before any mention of appraisal or allowance, the prospect must be thoroughly sold on wanting a new Cadillac, and not just any new Cadillac at that. He must have his heart set on a particular car, have already decided on the particular color, style, and equipment, have already narrowed his choice down to the Cadillac he wants. And certainly, the price-minded prospect will definitely have already had a demonstration ride. Before dollars can be mentioned, he must be sold on becoming an owner. Remember, we as salesmen are apt to be even more dollar conscious than our customers. Even though they may talk price, their primary motive is an emotional desire to have a new car. If you have made an effective presentation and demonstration, the prospect should be convinced that he wants to buy. We know that we always give the best value, but sometimes it's necessary to sell a prospect on that fact. And in situations like this, the appraisal form can be of particular help, can make the prospect certain that your appraisal of his trade and your allowance are actually very fair. Beyond that, the appraisal form can be used to prove why trading the older car now and buying a new Cadillac actually represents a wise investment, as the prospect's car is worth more today than at any future time. Regardless of the specific use to which the form is put, the two elements of timing and technique are always the keys to success. Using the form at the right time and in the right manner. Right now, Let's look at a couple of typical situations where the appraisal can work for you. The first is one you're already familiar with because it involves a typical prospect, the previous Cadillac owner, representing a good percentage of our new buyers. Already sold on Cadillac quality, they're still liable to offer resistance when they finally get the allowance. Let's listen. Look, Harry, I bought three Cadillacs from you. Three. I'm a good customer, and I thought a friend. Why, this new Cadillac would cost me almost twice as much to buy as my 55 did. I know it, Mr. Jenkins, but let's face facts. As a businessman, you certainly realize how much more everything costs today. You bought a new house just this year, and I'll bet it cost a lot more than the one you moved out of, didn't it? Sure did, Harry, but this is still quite a jolt you've given me. I thought you people made a big point of the way Cadillacs held their value. We do, but you must realize a used Cadillac has the highest resale value in the automotive business today. New or used, we're always selling a Cadillac. The Cadillacs we put on our used car lots are new cars to the people who buy them. So to protect our reputation, we've got to make sure they're like new. When you traded the 53 for your 55, you traded a real clean car. Relatively low mileage, a body that was spotless, good tires, and an engine that just purred. Now, on the other hand, you're measuring that trade against the higher mileage car that probably will need some work before we can sell it. Now, I've got it all here in black and white on the appraisal form. 
Sure, it's had a little more driving than the other one. My son drives now, you know. But if you can't do better than this, I'll just have to delay buying until you can. You're about $400 high as I see it. Mr. Jenkins, you have a very nice car here. Whether you trade or not, some of this work should be done. Let's just go look at some of these items on your car. Now first, your tires. New tires and tubes to replace these would cost, oh, about 200. But you could probably get a set wholesale for, let's say, 150. I know a place that can help you. What's next on the appraisal? A cracked windshield. We'd have to replace that. And I'm not sure of the exact amount, but it's well over 100. Just to make it easy, we'll make it an even 100. Now, our appraiser noticed a few smaller items. Wouldn't cost too much individually, but they mount up. Let's look at them. First, the scratches on the rear fenders. What is Benson doing? Simply going down the entire appraisal form and translating each item that might be wrong on the possible trade into dollars and cents. As he does this, the owner starts thinking about some fairly costly service he hadn't even considered. As he goes through all these items one by one, He's also succeeding in narrowing the money difference between what the prospect thought he should be allowed for his car and the actual allowance. In the prospect's mind, the older car is becoming less and less valuable. The owner is beginning to realize how much it will cost him not to trade, beginning to realize how much is actually wrong with his present car. While the older car is losing its value, the new Cadillac, which he really wants anyway, looks more and more appealing. Even if every item on the appraisal form might not need immediate attention, the prospect has been supplied with some valuable sales helps to use on his wife or to help himself make a buy now decision. You might call this use of the appraisal form nickel and diming the prospect into the close. For by the gradual buildup of a lot of little items into some very considerable dollar amounts, the prospect soon realizes that he could never do better than dealing right now and avoiding all that service expense. And isn't it true? This is most characteristic of the repeat Cadillac owner. He's not really interested in nickels and dimes, but in owning and driving the very finest car he can have, the very newest Cadillac. He really wants it. On the other hand, let's consider the prospect who's been driving some other make of car and who's considering Cadillac for the first time. You may run into something like this. What? You must not want to sell cars. I can get $400 more than that on a Chrysler Imperial. Frankly, that doesn't surprise me at all. You can generally get a discount on a Chrysler Imperial, and it's generally in the form of an over-allowance on the trade. They can afford to do that, because their prices often include a generous amount for this specific purpose. We're allowing you fair value on the real price of the Cadillac. If you want to weigh the real value of Cadillac against Chrysler Imperial, let's just look at the resale value figures over the past few years. I think you'll be surprised. The first thing to do is to give the prospect an idea of the real value of the competitive car by going over local used car prices. He'll recognize the competitive pack and the discount himself. Explain the background of these over-allowances. To keep their volume up on a competitive car that lacks the great public agents of Cadillac, first one dealer discounts, then the next one does it a little more. The snowball starts, and it just keeps rolling. Now, I can tell you one thing for sure. You're going to love that blue Coupe de Ville like you've never loved another car. A lot more than you would any Chrysler. After all, Cadillac is the prestige car with more benefits to the owner than any other motor car today. And when you finally do get around to trading, you'll find that it's actually to your advantage to trade this Cadillac for another. The reason is simple. We'll be able to allow you more for your Cadillac because we'll be able to sell it for more. You're buying honest value rather than an inflated price and an over-allowance, which cancel each other. If the competitive owner needs still more convincing, the nickel and dime technique of going right down the appraisal form is just as convincing as it is with Cadillac owners. The technique is the same. Remember, the prospect should always be convinced that he does want to buy a new Cadillac, and he should always select a specific color and model. 
And as we've said, use the appraisal only when you actually need it to get over a price objection. And simply don't let that price situation develop until after the selling. The presentation and the demonstration are over. When you go over appraisal items one by one, you're accomplishing two things. First, nickel and diming the difference between what you can allow and what the prospect thinks his car is worth into a very small difference indeed. And second, pointing up the need for immediate work on the trade, which will cost the prospect money if he postpones buying now. When you have to give what the prospect considers a low allowance because of a low appraisal, feel free to remind him of all the things which need repair and remind him of the costs involved, either to recondition for resale or for him to keep the car. And if the possible trade is a car of a different make, make sure he realizes that the basic value of a car is the only real dollar yardstick. And Cadillac leads the field in value at trade-in time. Your appraisal form can be one of your most valuable sales tools, helping you over price objections at the critical time just before the close. Use it with the right timing and technique and you'll find that dollar talk makes selling sense.